In the last video, I just took apart the uh, transmission that I'm going to be installing in my 1989 Toyota pickup. It's a five-speed manual transmission that I got out of another truck from a buddy and I'm replacing my automatic transmission with it. Being a gearbox designer, there isn't anything on this table that I'm not familiar with and that I haven't seen before. It all makes sense to me. I look at everything and I just understand how it goes together. And that comes from the experience and the time that I dedicated to just learning about gearboxes and how to design them and all the parts. And after going through all that, it just baffles me whenever I talk about doing work on the manual transmission, how scared or concerned or this, this mental roadblock or stigma that people have towards working on complex mechanisms like this. And to be honest, this really isn't a complex mechanism. Yeah, there's a lot of moving parts. Yeah, things have to go together in a certain area, but basically it's just a bunch of gears that mesh with a bunch of other gears that are on two different shafts. And then they have forks that select which gear you wanna do and that changes the ratio. That in my mind, isn't a very complex system. Like the inside of a CPU, that's a complex system. This anybody can understand it if you just take the time to do the research and learn and get familiar with the parts and that's really what the point of this video is i want to introduce you to the part of the gearbox that everybody is so scared of and break it down into its parts and then show you how to disassemble it and then reassemble it so you're not afraid to doing it yourself and maybe this will be the push you need to want to do the transmission rebuild yourself or something like that. So I'm going to grab a couple of the parts and I'm going to set them to the side, move the camera over there, and then we're going to go through what each of them do and how they work and then pull them apart and put them together and show you how with a little bit of patience and a little bit of time, you can feel comfortable diving into the transmission rebuild you've always wanted to do. So here we are just off to the side of the rest of the transition. And these are all the parts that you basically need to understand to be able to take apart a transmission and then be able to put it back successfully. So we'll start with the shafts and then work our way through the stuff above. This is the input shaft. It is attached to the engine through the clutch. This is where your power comes in. This is the output shaft. This is where all of the magic happens. And then this spline is attached to the rear axle or the transfer case in our instance. In between the two is a roller bearing. And that roller bearing sits inside the input shaft and attaches and slides over the output shaft so that they can spin separately. The third part to this puzzle is the intermediate shaft. In this instance, the intermediate shaft is aligned like this and it has all of the gears fixed to the shaft. So this is one giant piece that's all machined and made together. It has a bearing on this side and it has a bearing on the other side. This input shaft is always in mesh with the intermediate gear. So as the input shaft spins, the intermediate shaft spins as well. So these are always in constant motion. So now that we know that the intermediate shaft and the input shaft always spin together, the next thing to understand is that all of the gears on this, with the exception of this one, which is the reverse gear, are always in mesh with another gear that's on the output shaft. I've left most of them over there, but I brought this one, which meshes with the smallest gear over here. So as the intermediate shaft spins, each one of these matching gears spin as well. But the reason nothing happens is they all sit on needle bearings on the shaft. So that means all of these gears can just spin freely on the shaft because you haven't selected a gear. And to be able to select a gear, there's a mechanism called the shift fork. This is connected to a series of rods that stick out of the transmission somewhere and there's a lever and as you move that lever these forks move back and forth and the movement of these forks back and forth control what is called the synchro and the synchro is the part that everybody seems to be scared of and i hope by the end of this video you're not scared of the synchro anymore and you have the confidence to work on your own transmission and now we'll pull the synchro apart into its pieces it has a couple moving parts these slide back and forth this internal part is splined to one of the splines on the output shaft and then they are splined together and a spline are all these little teeth that keep them from rotating independently 
And then the external teeth on this one are actually for the reverse gear. So we're gonna go ahead and ignore that for now. We're just focusing on the internal bits. So inside this is a retaining ring. You wanna pull the retaining ring out, put it to the side, and then flip it over. And then there's another retaining ring on the other side. So carefully pull it out. You're gonna feel some things drop onto your hand. So carefully let them fall through. We're gonna put those aside for now. And these are the two parts. So you have your internal part and your external spine part. Now what controls the external spine part is the shift fork. So this slides over this rib here, and as you shift whichever gear, it moves whichever combination you need back and forth. And as you slide to the left or to the right from center, it picks the gear in front of or behind it. And then the three parts that I set aside are basically locating pins. They're pieces of metal that have a raised part in the center and the retaining clips actually hold these things out so that when you haven't selected a gear or if you're not using that particular gear, it helps keep the shift collar in the center position. And if you see on the internal part, there are three grooves. And if you look at the external part, you can see that those three grooves line up with a special tooth that has a rib in it. And hopefully you can see here that that bump lines up with that cutout on that tooth. So when you're in, a, when you haven't picked the gear, these help keep this part centered. So assembling it is just as easy as taking it apart. Start with putting the inner part in your hand, then aligning the shift collar with the three grooves and it'll take a little bit of practice to get these together, but once you figure it out, it's pretty easy. You go ahead and you slide the locating mechanisms into their groove, and then you carefully press the retaining ring in, and that locks everything into place. Carefully flip everything back together, because it's still a little bit fragile at this point, and press in the other retaining ring. and the part is back together. And if you move the collar up and down, you can see that it doesn't want to come out. You can actually let it go. And if you don't jar it, it won't fall out. And now moving back, we're gonna introduce this brass piece. And this brass piece is what does the synchronizing. You can see that it rotates just a couple degrees in each direction, but what that does is it blocks the teeth. And as you can see, everything is aligned and you can push it in or when everything's not aligned, you can't push it in. So what this mechanism does is it blocks the splines from being able to shift until everything is moving relative to each other. So if you imagine, I went and got a lighter gear for this. If you imagine that the splines next to these teeth, they're just sitting here on the output shaft and it's not spinning. This, on the other hand, with these splines, is attached to the output shaft, and it is spinning because it is already in a different gear. As you shift out of one gear, everything falls central again. Everything is in this neutral position. It's not to the left or to the right. And as you engage this particular gear, it starts pushing this collar towards me. And as you start moving it towards you, there's a little bit of oil between this brass piece and the gear you're shifting in that creates a little bit of friction and it offsets it, holding this brass piece locked to one side. And as this gear starts spinning faster and faster, that force decreases. And there's a certain point where that force is no longer enough to keep this locked in the side position and it lets everything center up again and it allows you to push the shift collar in. And when that happens, there's a little bit of spline that you see here is now allowed to line up with the spline 
on the gear so everything is locked together and everything rotates correctly. So when you're done with that gear, you simply move the shift collar back and you'll hear everything snap back into place. This is allowed to rotate back and forth now to block the shift. And then all your paws are back in the centering position, keeping everything centered. With the explanation of the synchronizer done, the last thing I want to talk about is the fact that you can't be afraid to get into a project like this. And you can't be afraid to break stuff because that's exactly what I did. Because I didn't fully understand how this went together and frankly because one part was being super stubborn and the way I was holding onto the gear, I actually chipped the corner of a couple teeth. So that means I need to find and replace one of these gears. But that's not deterring me from working on this transmission. I knew going into it that I could mess something up and I'm not afraid that I'm going to mess something up. Since I broke that gear, all that really means is I need to spend a little bit more money on replacement parts. That gear, I think is gonna cost me around $100 to $150. The rebuild kit for this is about $400, maybe $300 if I can find a good deal. But I'm still ahead of the game, $1,100 if I were to go with a refurbished one. And I know you can find used ones, but you're kind of in the same boat. You don't know the condition of the used ones. So even then, if you buy a used one that's $300 and you tear it apart, and you break a gear and you buy a Synchro Rebuild Kit, you're at about $700. You're still ahead of the game, another $900. So I just wanted to put this video together to show that the mechanism that most people are scared of really isn't that scary. It just takes a little bit of time to understand it. If you lay it out as you take it apart and you remember and you take pictures of how it came apart, it's a lot easier to put it back together. And if you break a couple parts, that's not a big deal. They're not super expensive. You can go ahead and upgrade them. And if you want to upgrade them, you can upgrade them to higher quality gears or aftermarket gears if you want. But at the end of the day, you've gotten dirty, you've gotten in here, you've done a huge project, and you should be proud of the fact that you've taken apart the transmission and you've put it back together and it's now in your truck. And this doesn't even apply to just trucks. This applies to any vehicle or any automotive thing, anything that has a gearbox. Go in there, take it apart, learn about it, and be proud when you put it back together. Well, I hope this video kind of shook a little bit of the stigma that goes along with these things. I hope that more people get the confidence to want to start working on their vehicle or restore a vehicle. Or if you are restoring a vehicle and you want to do something like this, I hope this gives you the confidence to dive in there and learn and get dirty and do it yourself. Well, I'm going to end this here. I've got to start taking measurements so that I can work on the transfer case project. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them down below. I hope you all take care, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.